Next, let's do an example of a fluid system where we have a fluid resistor that we're going to assume is going to have turbulent flow. In this system, we're going to linearize about a nominal Q0 for the pump flow rate. And uh, we'll start by writing the fluid capacitance law, which is C times S times P minus PA. Ambient pressure actually is constant, so we can just write this as C times P dot. That's got to be equal to the flow in Q minus the flow out through this uh, fluid resistor, which is 1 over R times P minus PA raised to the 1 half power. The first thing we want to do is uh, figure out our deviations. So we'll have P is equal to P naught plus delta P. And then we'll have Q is equal to Q naught plus delta Q. If you recall, we said that we also want to plug these into our differential equation where we're going to set the deviations equal to 0 in order to solve for the operating point. So once we do that, we end up the C times P dot, um, our operating point is constant, so C times P naught dot is 0. That's going to be equal to Q naught minus 1 over R times P naught minus P A raised to the 1 half power. And of course, we can uh, uh, move this over, and we end up with Q naught is equal to 1 over R times P naught minus P A to the 1 half. And if you want to solve for P naught, that's just going to be equal to P A plus uh, R Q quantity squared. So now we have a relationship that tells us what our operating point pressure is for the operating point flow. The third part is to substitute in now uh, the deviations, which are not going to be 0. So what we end up with is C times delta P dot is equal to Q naught plus delta Q minus 1 over R P naught minus P A to the 1 half. And remember that these two terms actually add up to 0 because that's what we just did here. So I'm going to be able to drop those in a minute. But I'm going to keep those in for now because I also need to calculate the partial derivative. So I need a partial derivative of this quantity with respect to P. So if I do that, that's going to be 1 over 2R times P minus PA raised to the negative 1 half power. And this is going to be evaluated at P naught for P. And then all of this gets multiplied by delta P. So Notice that we have our operating point equation right here, which, by the way, notice that we, if we wanted, we could have just written this equation to begin with and then solved for Q0 and P0 separately. But now here's my deviation equation. I have C times delta P dot. I have, I'm going to move this term over to the uh, other side of the equation. So I get 1 over 2R times P0 minus PA raised to the negative one half power. All of this is just a constant, where P naught is also this quantity right here. And then this multiplies by delta P, and I get delta Q. So this is a linear constant coefficient differential equation in terms of delta P and delta Q around the operating point that's described by P naught and Q naught. Here's the same example, except uh, we've typed everything out so that the equations are in a slightly more legible form. But here's the differential equation again, where we recall that this term right here is a constant, and so what we have is a linear constant coefficient differential equation. Here's another example where we have a block sliding on a viscous film and resisted by air drag, which is given by the coefficient of drag times V squared. We want to linearize about the velocity V naught if I write the equations motion, I have mx double dot is equal to negative cd times v squared plus uh, the drag due to the viscous friction, which I'm going to denote this way, fb, and I'll draw it as a damper. So this b from the friction is just going to appear here. And that's going to act on ground. So I have velocity 0 and velocity v here. So this means I have negative b times v minus 0. And I'm going to have 
F acting on my system. So that's the nonlinear differential equation where we have the V squared term. So my deviations are going to be V is equal to V naught plus delta V, and then F is going to be equal to F naught plus delta F because there's some nominal force that's needed in order to move us at the nominal velocity V. So I'm just going to plug that into our differential equation. Oh, and I should have written m times v dot here, uh, since we don't really need the variable x. So we have m times v naught plus delta v dot. And I'm going to move some of the terms over to the left, plus cd times v naught plus delta v squared, plus b times v naught plus delta v is equal to f naught plus delta f. So here's our equation and remember we want to start off by solving for our operating point. So we're going to make our deviations equal to zero. So that means that we're just going to end up with cd times v naught squared plus b v naught is equal to f naught. Oh and I forgot to mention v naught is a constant, so v naught dot is automatically going to be zero. So this is an equation for our operating point because it tells us what f naught should be in order to be compatible with our nominal speed. Next we want to go back to this equation except we want to put the delta v's back in. So what we end up with is m times delta v dot plus cd times v naught squared plus I need the derivative of this term so that's going to be 2 cd times v naught and that gets multiplied by delta v. This is our first order Taylor series term plus b v naught plus b delta v is equal to f naught plus delta f. Now notice that all of the naught terms here are actually already written out for us up above. So we can just subtract this equation from here and what we're left with is just the differential equation. In fact, I might as well combine these 2cd v naught plus b times delta v is equal to delta f. And then here's the same equations just typed out. 